geologic origins of the Bertrandite deposits in western Utah. To understand the origins of the beryllium deposits in the Spore Mountains, we have to go back to when western Utah was still under the ocean. For hundreds of millions of years, this ocean floor built up gradual layers of shale, limestone, sandstone, and dolomite. The North American tectonic plate began to separate from the rest of Pangaea about 200 million years ago and was moving westward into the Farallon Plate, which was subducting under the western margin of North America. The sediments carried down with it were heated and rose toward the surface to cool as granitic plutons. They formed the Sierra Nevada Mountains. For the first time, the western half of Utah and Nevada rose above the ocean. Then, about 150 million years ago, something happened that's still not completely understood. The North American Plate sped up. Instead of subducting, the remnants of the Farallon Plate were pushed under western North America, scraping and dragging the roots of the continent with it. This friction caused a wave of thrust faulting and mountain building that traveled west to east across Nevada, becoming the Nevadan orogeny, then across western Utah, what's called the severe orogeny, about 125 to 75 million years ago. During the Middle Jurassic period, a huge mountain range rivaling today's Rockies sat on the Utah-Nevada border, with sediments washing off of it into an inland sea to the east to form the upper layers of the Colorado Plateau, as dinosaurs wandered through the mudflats and swamps. These swamps became the coal deposits of central and eastern Utah. As the thrust faulting continued east, it encountered the thick Colorado Plateau and bent it into a huge anticline called the San Rafael Swell. When it reached Colorado and Wyoming about 60 to 55 million years ago, the thrust faulting created the Laramide orogeny that resulted in the Rocky Mountains. About 50 million years ago, the North American plate slowed down again and the remnants of the Farallon Plate collapsed from underneath, peeling away in a wave that now traveled from east to west. A wave of volcanism traveled with it, moving back across Colorado, then Utah, then Nevada. Much of the mineralization found in these states occurred at this time, including the silver, copper, zinc, lead, manganese, and beryllium deposits of Utah. In western Utah, the volcanism produced several zones of andesitic volcanoes with calderas and ash flows. These included the Thomas Spore Mountain caldera, along with calderas at Keg Mountain and Desert Mountain. All of this happened about 45 to 39 million years ago and continued for at least 30 million years through several phases. In the first phase, quartz-rich magmas formed the calderas and ash flows that covered much of the area and produced the gold, copper and manganese deposits of the Detroit district in the Drum Mountains. The second phase of area volcanism occurred as the calderas subsided and were filled with rhyolite from the Dugway Valley caldera about 38 to 32 million years ago. These rhyolites now form the core of Topaz Mountain with its associated topazes and garnets. The ancient thrust faults and collapsed calderas created fractures, which served as avenues to intrude veins of mineral-bearing magmas. Beginning about 25 million years ago, a third phase of volcanism pushed domes of highly alkaline rhyolite, rich in fluorine and beryllium, up through these fractures. The fluorine and beryllium minerals formed gases that were injected into the thrust faults and eventually encountered groundwater. The groundwater flashed into steam, shattering the surrounding rhyolite and forcing the beryllium minerals to precipitate throughout the fractures and empty spaces in the host rhyolite rock. Gradually, Crystals of topaz, fluorspar, garnet, and bertrandite were deposited in the Thomas Spore Ranges and Red Barrel in the Wawa Mountains. Additional trace elements such as uranium, lithium, aluminum, zirconium, iron, and thorium were also deposited. You now know where beryllium comes from, its source minerals, its uses, and the geologic history of the bertrandite deposits in the Spore Mountains of Utah. In Part 2, We'll continue to explore how beryllium is unearthed by looking at the history of mining operations, how bertrandite is mined and refined today, and its health hazards.